Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Freedom Wanderer. I'm Chuck McDonald. I'm so happy you are here, and I am super excited today. Why? Because I'm going scuba diving, and I'm not just going sightseeing. I'm looking for dinner. We're going spearfishing, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the adventure. Let's get on the water. back out on the water with Express Water Sports here in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Uh, Scuba Express, as we know them, had a chance to take another charter back out to the Bill Perry where I shot the sheep's head, but I didn't harvest it because it got away. And I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna see if I can find it. And if I do, you're gonna get to see it. I'm trying a new headspace camera on this video instead of the handheld. I lose a lot of footage doing that. So I'm gonna try to do better that way. And I'm taking you on the adventure. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to try my best to narrate for you a little bit of what's going on underwater. So welcome underwater with me. Yes, you did hear me talk about a strange sheep's head in that last clip. But I'm gonna take you along the journey of what happened. So I had two dives with Express Water Sports. One was on a Sunday, one was on a Wednesday. And as we go along, I'll tell you about the story of this sheep's head while I'm scuba diving here. I did notice this flounder come by and I tried to pin him down with my spear gun, but as I looked up, I noticed another scuba diver in pursuit of that flounder. So I let it go and let him take that flounder. So I've now moved into the interior part of the shipwreck and you can see this big sheep's head. I take a shot and I miss. And I wondered why I missed. So I'll slow it down for you and let you see right as I shoot, he turns and I missed him by a hair's breath. So I'm back up and I'm ready. I'm looking for my sheep's head, but I also want to let you know that inside these shipwrecks, as I'm looking around, I'm looking for antennas in case there are any spiny lobster. Also looking at the top ceiling part or in the back edges of the shipwreck because a lot of slipper lobsters stay there. Also, the bigger grouper, they will be hiding up in these rooms. So I'll be honest, I'm trying to trim as much of this footage as I can. I'm doing more than just spear fishing. I'm also taking video for, um, you know, a highlight of this wreck, the Bill Perry. Um, but I did notice this big square hole cut out in the deck and saw a lot of dust, which is usually a good sign of a good sized grouper. So I'm kind of sneaking over to see if he's still there or if he's moved into another section. Thank you. 
So I went down the deck looking, didn't see any shooter grouper. So I turn around and I'm coming back across the deck and see this big sheep's head in the distance. And I'm thinking to myself, is this the same sheep's head? And as you can tell, I totally missed again. So I reloaded my gun, moved over to my left, which would be the starboard side of the ship. And I see him off in the sand and I'm using this piece of metal up off the side of the ship, kind of hiding behind it, trying to take my shot. And there he is. I take my shot. I land my shot. I hit him high in the back and he immediately starts spinning. So I rush to try to pull him in, but I am not fast enough. He gets away, he swims right past me, just out of arm's length, right behind me, and turns into the ship. I have missed this sheep's head at least three times. So I figured I would sneak back over to my little hole where I thought the big grouper was to see if maybe he came back home. Fortunately, he was not. So I promise you I'm not trying to bore you guys, but I do want you to also experience the dive itself a little bit uh, and see how we hunt and look in holes and you know gradually go along the side of the shipwreck looking for something to eat.
So it's the next day, it's a few days later actually, and you can tell by the visibility and the water clarity that uh, we're on a different dive, but I wanted to show you some of the interior and also to show you these fish that you see. A lot of people will think these are some type of mangrove, but they are actually red snapper in the state of South Carolina. is very, very picky about harvesting red snapper. In fact, they only give us two days each year to harvest red snapper. Maybe we'll come back for that, but I'm inside in the interior looking for my sheep's head three days later. So if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I am not going crazy. I have actually found the sheep head and I do apologize again. The camera is not positioned exactly correct, so it didn't pick it up, but I have found that sheep's head with the hole in its back and I'm trying to get an angle to take a shot. I'm also noticing there are other divers around, so I I don't want to shoot towards a diver, and I definitely don't want them shooting towards me. So that's my struggle here that you see going on. I look one way, he runs back, and so I look through the doorway and he runs back the other way, and I never could get a clear shot. I give up on that sheep's head because of all the divers on the interior of the ship. So I made my way out and you can see I'm going along the side of the ship here. There's that structure I was hiding behind when I shot that sheep's head. And the divers in front of me have spooked a flounder and I see him. And although the camera, again, is not picking it up, sorry, you'll see me, it'll feel, look like a shake well, I took my spear gun and just drove the flounder and I've got him. And so I've at least got one fish. This is my first dive on the Wednesday on my return trip back. So I don't know if you can tell it yet, but I've switched from holding the camera in my hand to putting it on my head. And of course, watching these videos back, I realized my camera angle was a little high 
you can't see the things I'm doing with my hands. But I had come back for my second dive. I nailed in the sand. I got my camera started. I put my headband on. I look up. And this guy started. Coming. In this scene, as I was coming across the deck, I was going back to my grouper honey hole, maybe for a lucky shot. And I saw something. And I will pause it right here. Be honest. Tell me if you can see it and leave it in the comments. So I made my approach. I did not have my spear gun. So I drew my knife out and I went and struck him, landed it, but because it was a ship, it did not go through and I could not hold him. And as you can tell, he swam off with my knife. Gratefully, he didn't go far. My knife fell out. I was able to retake another strike and I landed it, although the camera didn't pick up a lot of what was going on. It was a nice 18 inch flounder. So as you can tell in this picture, I have an 18 inch flounder, a 16 inch flounder, and a 17 inch sheep's head with a hole in the back. Yes, another diver saw it, heard me tell the story, actually took the sheep's head, brought it to me after his first dive and said, here you go, bud. And he gave me the sheep's head. So I ended up with that sheep's head anyway, and we're going to clean it up and eat it. I thought you had two fish. Nah. Flounder for dinner, baby. My wife's done called me. What did you get? What are we having for dinner? We're having fish. That's what we're having. Yeah, enjoyed the trip, bro. Send them to you on YouTube. Yeah, man. Do it. Right, let's knock the sides off for of this flounder. We'll take this top fillet and let you guys see some flounder meat. So what you want to do is just follow that rib cage. told us to do it. So I got the top fin. We'll just take that for right off. Left the ribs, left everything. All right, so now we got a big fat sheep's head. You can see where I shot him Sunday <laughs> and he spun off, and the guy shot him today in the exact same spot. So let's knock a fillet off and let you see it.
and these spines will get you. So you got a rib cage right here, just go up and over. Some people take the ribs and then cut them out, either way. Got some pin bones to cut through. If you hear squeaking, that's the dock moving, by the way. Just like any other fish, take your time, do it right. This is actually my first time cleaning the sheep's head, and I did pretty decent. Don't get in a rush. Don't try to impress people, even though people are all around the dock watching me do this. Get those pin bones real good. Look at that beautiful white meat right there. So you can see I got some of those ribs right there. I'm just going around it. Bam. No waste. Alright. See you guys in the kitchen. Poke. Pineapple salsa. Leftovers. Kerrygold butter, which is from heaven. Heaven? Yep, straight from heaven. For a garden? For a garden? Yep. How did a dog God, uh, make bread? Come mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know how humans make bread. So no. I ain't gonna know how God makes it. Kerrygold garlic and herb butter is awesome. Dad, I don't know. A stove, a have you noticed I finally got Everglades? Uh, they sell it at Seven Seas. Oh, okay. Cool. If you like that Tony sass, you're going to love this. Oh. Is good seasoning? Oh, this stuff is amazing. And fish and chicken. Oh, okay. Fish and chicken. Yep. I love chicken. This is our sheep's head. It tastes really good, but I can't get past it. All right, so now we're going to flounder. Mm. Well, if you can sit down and eat that whole bowl of poke, that's four ahi tuna cuts. Steaks. It's one package out of the frozen section at Walmart. Well, no, not just you, Riley. I love that. Carrot gold, gold. Carrot, carrot, 
No, this butter has already got the herbs, the garlic, and the herbs in it instead of taking regular butter and making your own compound butter. K E R R I. said you wanted a tiny piece of fish. I saved that one little piece for you. All right, so I just noticed going through all that footage that I didn't have an outro, and I'm sorry about that. Wow, so it's, it's a few days later, but just to be clear on how I cooked it, uh, I had an 8-inch frying pan. So I use a half a stick of Kerry Gold garlic and herb butter because the herbs and garlic's already in it. Some olive oil to keep. Olive oil keeps the butter from burning. And a half a lemon squeezed. So some straight up lemon juice and it's pretty awesome. As I cook my fish, as the butter starts to wear down, I just keep adding more. Every time I add a half a stick of butter, I use a half a lemon. So that puts the lemon, the garlic, and some herbs already in uh, what I fry with. And I did use Everglades fish and chicken for the first time. I had found it at a local fish market. Sorry about that sunshine. And so if you want to know how it turned out, I actually did a video taste testing and somehow I've lost that. Sorry about that, but it's kind of a long video anyway. So I don't want to bore you to death. Let's just say there were no leftovers. Everything gone. Um, everybody loved it. It was fresh fish for dinner, which is what I like. That's awesome. So anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thank you for going on my sheep's head journey. That was actually two days of diving, two tanks, two dives each day. So that was four dives. And you can tell in the video quality, um, the, the visibility on the second dive we went on a sunday we went back on a wednesday when i found the sheep's head that i shot and uh so the visibility was a little less but so i tried to keep it as compact as possible this is probably the longest video i've ever made and so it's taken a lot of work and so i i appreciate those guys who do these catch clean and cook videos it really takes a lot i learned a new appreciation for that but anyway Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking in there. Please like, subscribe, comment as always. I'm grateful for our new subscribers. And those of you who just watch and haven't subscribed yet, one day you will because we're going to have some fun. Always in the description below and in the comments, we have great products on this, on our YouTube channel, especially our Slenderize. It's, it is, well, especially Slenderize. It is selling, uh, it's up two thousand percent so far two zero 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 percent is selling like crazy so anyway those products are down there links you can check on and see if those products are for you i love you guys i appreciate it thank you for hanging out with me and as always friends life is an adventure you've got to get off of the couch and go live it so we'll see you in the next adventure <laughs>